Welcome to Real Paranormal Activity, the network. Entertainment you'll enjoy. You are listening to an RPA production where people gather. Ladies and gentlemen, RPA is proud to present Aaron's Horror Show with Aaron Frail. Hi, this is Steve Silver with Silver Screen Videos, and you're listening to Aaron's Horror Show with Aaron Frail. You are listening to Aaron's Horror Show, and I'm your host, Aaron Frail. We get to read fiction on the show and talk about some movies, books, you name it. If you like what I do here, please consider supporting the show at patreon.com forward slash Aaron Frail. You'll get some books and other cool stuff for your support. Go ahead and also reach out to me at Aaron's Horror Show at gmail.com, Aaron Horror Show on Twitter, or Aaron's Horror Show on Facebook. Thank you so much for listening and enjoy. Welcome to Aaron's Horror Show, and I'm your host, Aaron Frail. Star Trek Strange New Worlds. That's what I'm talking about today. Uh, you know, I forgot, honestly, if I have covered the first season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. So uh, watch both seasons. <laughs> I'll talk about them both. Probably more about season two. Anyways, Star Trek, Paramount Plus. That's how you go. That's how you get it. If you are a member of Walmart Plus, you'll have Paramount Plus. Or you can get it as an Amazon channel. All right, so <laughs> you've watched it. Star Trek Strange New Worlds is the best Star Trek that is on TV. I am not kidding. It is amazing. Yeah, no, I, I really love it. Like, Discovery, it took a while to get going. You know, first season of Discovery was pretty rocky. But then it got better and better, and now it's really good, right? Strange New Worlds? No, nah, man, that just, that just starts good. <laughs> that just, yeah, it's... It's a really fun, uh, great, great show. Uh, you know, it, it it literally has the heart of what you love about Star Trek in its entire DNA from start to finish. All the members of the crew are really, like, amazing. You really care about them. Uh, of course, you get to see more of Spock and more of Ethan Peck as Spock, who I think Ethan Peck, outside of Leonard Nimoy, of course, is uh, my favorite Spock. So, yeah, there, I said it. I know fighting words for some people. I know they made whole movies <laughs> uh, with another uh, person as Spock. But, man, Ethan Peck, I think, does a really good job. Uh, and in season two, there's this amazing episodes in, in there. Just, okay, maybe I won't talk about season one because, man, there's some good episodes in season two. Like, there's this one where... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Spock, like, gets rewritten by an alien, so he gets killed, and then aliens, like, revive him and basically say, uh, we have, you know, revived you and turned you, you know, based on DNA profiles to what we think is you, and then they rebuilt him as a human rather than a half-human, half-Vulcan, uh, <laughs> Which is pretty uh, funny. Like he, he, you know, is experiencing, you know, human emotions. And uh, he does a very good job at that. <laughs> right. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there, that that's really great. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Christine Chapel, the nurse chapel from the original series. Uh, you know, she's she's a great character, too. And and they really develop her, of course, way more than than uh, 
than uh, uh, I think Nurse Chapel was ever developed in the original series. So yeah, no, it's really great. And uh, Chris, you know, Captain Pike, yeah, you, you, <laughs> you really like him, you know. Uh, uh, there's also a great uh, episode with uh, Lan. She's the uh, Lannan. Uh, she's the uh, security officer. So she's the one that, uh, 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 you know, I guess the wharf equivalent. <laughs> uh, you know, so if uh, if you're thinking uh, <laughs> uh, wharf, anyways, she she goes back in time. Uh, you know, and and essentially uh, meets a. Uh, you know, Captain Kirk, who goes back in time with her, uh, you know, basically a temporal agent comes to her and says, you gotta, you know, fix the timeline or everything's screwed. And <laughs> she, you know, goes back in time, or actually she goes to a parallel universe first, where, you know, everything sucks, the Federation is dead, people are just barely scraping by, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and meets Captain Kirk because Captain Pike's dead already at this point, but it's not Captain Kirk like the one we know. It's like weird post-apocalyptic Captain Kirk. <laughs> and anyways, they then go travel to the past and they go to uh, Toronto or something like that. Uh, somewhere in Canada. I forgot where. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, they have to stop this like terrorist incident from happening because that's what essentially uh, caused the timeline to deviate and humans being destroyed and all this other kind of stuff and it's really it's a really good episode like oh my god it was such a good episode like that was my like greatest like like it, it does all the things that star trek does really well when they time travel so you know there's the sort of uh bumbling their way through the world you know like, you know, one of the best lines ever is, you know, the original Leonard Nimoy going off a bus and saying to Captain Kirk, what's exact change? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like they just got kicked out of the bus. Uh, you know, there's the same thing like that. Like, uh, like they find out they need to use money, you know, because they basically are going like, oh, man, we can't wear our Star Trek clothes. Uh, let's go to a store. And they go to a store and they put on a new clothes and. And of course they walk out and and now they're being chased because they have just shoplifted. <laughs> and and then they're like, Oh great, we I guess we needed money for that. And so, you know, uh Captain Kirk goes and plays chess and starts betting on chess. And they make a joke of like, Well, it's only the two dimensional chess. That's easy. It's not like the three dimensional stuff they play on Star Trek, you know, and so they get money. Yeah, you know, and and uh, yeah, no, it's yeah, very very fun uh, episode. I really liked that one. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so the the very good cast, great uh, synergy with the we each other, and it does you know all the fun stuff that Star Trek does, where they go literally and find strange new worlds and. They get in, you know, cultural conflicts and <laughs> and uh, they, you know, go on their personal journeys and and uh, yeah, no, it's it's great. Uh, Ahura is in it, of course, because she's was you know part of the crew before uh, Captain Kirk was there. And 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 by the way, the Pike crew is actually from the original series. Uh, so you know, uh, so his his uh first uh officer you know so i guess this would be the commander Riker kind of uh character uh number one uh so she is a uh, a female and what was interesting is that in the original series the very first pilot episode was captain pike so uh, uh you know what tv shows do is they film pilots before they ever get on the air and the you know executives all go oh yeah this is what we want and and but anyways uh something changed between the pilot of star trek and the actual show like captain pike became captain kirk uh the first officer didn't really have a first officer and then you know they added sulu and Chekhov and bones <laughs> you know uh you know, Ahura was still there. Uh, so, you know, Spock and Ahura and 
Captain Pike and this uh, first officer, number one, uh, was there. And, and what's really interesting is that the uh, the actress uh, that played number one in the original series was Majel Barrett, who is Jean Roddenberry's wife, who uh, you would definitely recognize her because she played uh, Loxana Troy, Deanna Troy's mom from the uh, Next Generation. So Majel Barrett, who was in the original pilot of Star Trek as number one, uh, was uh, was basically uh, uh, Deanna Troy's mom and the voice of the computer. <laughs> so she actually was the computer voice. And what was really interesting, she was the computer voice pretty much her entire life. Like she did the computer voice in the original series and next generation, deep space nine Voyager, <laughs> uh, a whole lot of places. She did the computer voice. And I, I think they still use clips of her, uh, you know, in, in whenever they need a voice, uh, <laughs> of the computer as well. Uh, but it's interesting because, you know, the original series sort of, you know, the reason why Pike's no longer the captain is because he's in this horrible accident, uh, <laughs> which puts him in some little weird box that he could only flash lights for yes and no. <laughs> why he doesn't can't use Morse code, I don't know. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, you know, it was the 60s. But that's, you know, sort of the fate of Pike. And they kept the integrity of all that. So, the Strange New Worlds is actually before the original uh, Star Trek timeline, and they are alluding to the, you know, Captain Kirk will one day be <laughs> the captain of the Enterprise, and and so you really don't know what's going to happen to some of the crew, you know, like you obviously know Nurse Chapel and uh, uh, Aurora uh, survive, uh, and you know, Captain Pike doesn't die, just gets into a horrible accident and gets <laughs> basically stuck in this machine <laughs> where he could only communicate with a light. But yeah, uh, other than that, you know, the uh, Lannan and, and Ortega is the, the, you know, pilot and, you know, and then the doctor who's uh, not Bones, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you don't know what's going to happen to all of them. Uh, you know, uh, let me find the doctor's name, Dr. Dr. Mbenga. Yeah. You don't know what's going to happen to him, but he has a, you know, a past, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's an interesting, you know, I, I, I like it. I think, I think it's, I'm really, you know, excited that they're making a Star Trek like this again. Cause this, this is really like. The Star Trek you know and love, right? It is the Star Trek where they're out flying through the stars and <laughs> finding strange new worlds and encountering weird things and, <laughs> you know, like, it's 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 a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, I, I'd recommend watching it. I'd recommend it is worth getting Paramount Plus for if you don't have it. Or if you don't want to pay for Paramount Plus, it's definitely worth buying uh, and that's kind of what my, my, uh, you know, my spouse and I, that's what we do. We, uh, instead of, you know, buying a subscription to 5,000 different channels, <laughs> we've decided that we're going to cancel most of them. And then whatever money we are paying on them, we're going to put in a little pool of money and then just buy the shows <laughs> that we really like off of Amazon from the channels we don't really want to pay a whole subscription to for uh, one show. We figured that's the way to do it. Because really, when you think about it, you know, uh, like HBO, it's like $15 a month or something. And and really, like, the only two shows we watch are House of the Dragon and Last of Us. And so if we just buy the next season of last of us and the next season of house of dragon, that's going to be cheaper than paying for HBO for a whole year. Right. <laughs> so why pay for a whole year when I'll just buy the shows I like, you know, makes more sense to me anyways. Yeah, that that's it. So, uh, right. So yeah, uh, <laughs> strange new world. And if you ever have dreams of your, 
horrible, horrible accident. Take copious notes, right? <laughs> I mean, you figure if you're dreaming a premonition, you at least try and do something to avoid it, right? <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, that's all I have. Have a good night.